What is going on, Facebook? We are here. We're live with Josh Brown. Josh Brown's in town. He's the rogue teacher around. He teaches people how to build courses the best, better than yes, anyone else. That'd be right. But I'm, you know, I also have my own opinion on myself. So, yeah, I would agree. <laughs> okay, excellent. Yeah. So, uh, we're we're here with Josh Brown. He mm -hmm. is a former uh, school teacher of I yep. ten, over ten years, I believe. Yeah, I was a te I was a classroom teacher for about ten years, um, teaching technology education. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. So, okay, ten years technology education, and then mm -hmm. transitioned out of that and got into this whole uh, digital environment of online courses and building tribes and communities and marketing and sales and um yeah. and he has a really amazingly I, I would say it's amazingly unique approach to like well, i know when we were discussing this a couple weeks ago um mm -hmm. your approach to building courses is a little bit different than a lot of other people and yeah. it's also it just makes him more fun and more alive for the people and you really care about the mm -hmm. impact that it has on, on people's lives. And you know that a, mm -hmm. a good piece of information can change the world. So super glad yeah. to have you on here. And I'm going to kind of open the floor to you now to kind of share your journey of, you know, you started as a teacher and then you transitioned. And I want you to talk a little bit about that and what you're doing now. How you ended well, up. Yeah. Um, it, it was a pretty unique and for anybody in the funnel hacker community origin story, um of getting here because um i was actually a career switcher into teaching as well um i was in the business and sales world and um really i enjoyed it but i had gotten like burned out because i was in a lot of like super high touch like traditional sales stuff like i sold heavy equipment and i was in the entertainment industry for a while and um i kept coming back around i loved teaching um, and I would always done a little bit on the side. I actually had a master's degree in education, but I never used it. And I was finally like, okay, I'm, it's time for me to go to the classroom. So I started teaching what they call technology education, which is basically um, I taught video production and graphics and photography. Um, I even taught wood shop actually, because I had a background in stagecraft. So um, I was actually a shop teacher, no, no, still have all 10 of them. Um, very few of us actually ended up with that, always good. Not yeah. nipped a few chunks off here and there, but you know, um, but I uh, went through that and about a year and a half or two years ago, I started getting burned out, not by the students, but by the, all the red tape and the few students I had that were honestly a real pain in my backside. And so I started wanting something also that it had literally no headroom at all. It was literally an open, basically checkbook to growth. And that was, of course, looking at something entrepreneur. And I started taking courses, like being an academic, I immediately want to like, okay, I'm going to learn from anybody and everybody. So I started mentoring with a lot of six, seven and eight figure entrepreneurs. So I started taking their classes and, you know, doing their online masterminds and all those things. And they all had great information. But from an educator perspective, I started realizing like, their pedagogy basically the method in which you teach was absolute garbage and that's what i did that was my background was actually in pedagogy and curriculum design mm -hmm. so i was thinking to myself like okay you know i've got like an opening here that i can help people that a i can bring my love of teaching and like for me the best rush in the world is when i can literally see it in their eyes of that ding they get it that moment of clarity is like so cool. And particularly it's a, it's a rush for a teacher. I mean, you can see everybody in the room, all of them, they'll, they'll, you can see it in their eyes, like they get it, or you can literally subconsciously, they'll start nodding. And mm -hmm. that would happen. So I started like, okay, online, I can start doing the same thing. And within these groups, I started helping them, you know, saying like somebody was stuck, I'd give them a little bit of help. And even the moderators of these groups were like, dude, you actually really know what you're doing. And I was like, yeah. So I learned from these mentors, all of the marketing and the infrastructure and all that. But then I put that into play also with my years of teaching experience and how to teach really high difficulty areas. 
So I brought those things to bear and I never looked back. Like it just, I absolutely loved it. And I started, um, I formed my group course building accelerator. Um, and I started, um, creating a course and actually just came out of beta where it's a program to get people through, um, basically the build. Cause like less than 10% actually finish a course, which is mm. crazy. Really? Uh, yeah. There's actually, there, there's, People will argue the completion numbers, but most of them say it's actually sub 10%. Um, and even fewer, when they get the idea of they want to build a course, go through with it. Wow. Okay. So you have a huge background, just so I'm hearing you correctly. You got a huge background mm -hmm. in education, specifically like course design, curriculum design, how, pedagogy, how people, the, the practice of how people... Yeah teach and learn mm -hmm. and then you started getting a bunch of mentorship from different marketers and uh business owners sales sales um not sales um online course creator other online course creators and then you were you know as you were just providing a bunch of value inside of these groups and you were trying to figure out that you know n zero cap or that no cap business model for yourself you know, you mm -hmm. were offering all this value and people in the groups were like, hey, this is like a ton of value that you're providing to people. And from there, you were like, oh, yeah, that's what I've been doing. And I can bring this to all these people. Yeah, it was it was exactly that. I was sitting there and like I originally was going to actually teach a course on something different. And then they were and then I got so much positive feedback from those in those communities who are like, we really need this. And I actually had several people like direct message me and thank me for like just little things I did every day as an educator, but mm. were so different than the online world has. Yeah. So like, you know, just, just things for engagement, like everybody is putting out a course or it's literally just slide deck voiceovers and you're not engaging like three quarters of your learning potential of your students. And they're not realizing that people are gonna come in at different skill levels and there's a way to what's called differentiate what you're teaching while keeping the high performers engaged and not making the low, the low performers feel left out. Like there's a way to do that. And it's a skill you have to basically learn, but there's hacks to it and knowing how to implement it. Mm, okay. so. Just to get a, a little bit bigger picture, who who is the best person or like who is your ideal person who you're able to really help and really move like through this whole process of creating an amazing course? Normally, I'm dealing a I'm dealing a lot with people who are high performers in their niche. So whether it's, you know, in business or marketing or a particular software or sales, whatever it might be, I'm dealing a lot with those that are already coming in with, and their, their problem is they've got so much information up here, they don't know how to like get it to the people and filter it out and make it approachable. That's the big problem is a lot of people have no idea how to make it approachable. And that, that's who I deal with the most. Um, I do have a few students that come in and they're like, I don't even have any idea what I'm teaching. but. Mm -hmm then most of them are coming in with extreme specialties. Like some of my students are specialists in certain sales area, B2B or B2C, and they want to teach their skill to somebody. Um, you know, I've got a couple of other students that are niches that are specialists in growth. For example, one of them is a extreme expert on group um, fitness coaching and growth of those for those trainers. And I have like, for example, another one, she is an irrigation specialist. She actually grew a massive irrigation company and wants to teach people how to do that. And, um, you know, that's an amazing thing to see. And all of these are extreme niche experts who have people that want to do this. They have it outside right. and just either the per people who are trying to build the course are not experienced in it or they don't have passion in it. So it really shows you if you've spent any time, uh, you know, you've spent a few trips around the sun, you've been able to acquire knowledge and become a specialist in something or at least really passionate about something. 
Because that's the other thing people forget is there's a lot of people selling courses out there and not things how to make money. There are things to make here feel good. Mm. And they're willing to spend a lot of money on it, you know, in personal development, life coaching, or even just hobbies. You know, like the example I give is like, you know, my father-in-law spends a ton of money on golf. Not going to ever make any money on it, just loses a lot of money on it, but enjoys it and spends a lot of money to learn how to do it better. And there's even those areas too that you can really engage people and improve their lives, improve their businesses, improve their families while still also being able to monetize it. Because ultimately knowledge is part of the economy. In fact, some people started calling it the knowledge economy. Mm -hmm. And that really is something that people are almost afraid to monetize. And they're not realizing that it is such an important factor of that. If somebody pays, they do pay attention. Mm hmm. That is so true. Um, yeah, if they don't make the investment in themselves, then they won't do anything with it. Most free most yeah. people don't do anything with free information. Um, no, they don't. And on top of it, it you and like the old thing is, you, know, you get what you pay for. It doesn't always happen in paid education, but I'll, most of the time what you're those who pay a premium for something get a premium. Because ultimately, you still got to pay the bills, and none of this stuff is free. Yeah, yeah. Um, I want to move. I want to move back to something that you said a, a minute or two ago. Mm -hmm. On, I want to highlight this. We were talking about basically you don't need to be teaching a course on making money or digital marketing or you know all of these kind of things that are very much like bit you know business opportunity. Mm -hmm. basically marketing um and there's a ton of money and impact to be made by doing mm -hmm. something that's really true to your heart true to what you care about and there if you care about, about it passionately and you've actually and most of these experts like you were saying like they've spent money to learn these skills to become yeah. experts in their field they spent time they spent you know years of their life doing it like me myself like i play music all the time um mm -hmm. and you know i went i went to school for music but um since then i've spent additional time learning more and more and more about music and mm -hmm. you know i just love it and so if i really had a passion to teach about it i could make a course about it yeah and, and so if there's anyone listening out there like if you're incredibly passionate about something that you've taken time to learn about, you can teach it. You can provide that service to someone else, pass it along and get paid for it as well. Yeah. And that that's the thing is people, uh, you know, who are looking at this, they only look at sort of the things that automatically pop up in your newsfeed. Well, the problem is a lot of what pops up in your newsfeed is because it's courses being sold on how to market. So they're really good at marketing. So that's why your news feed's full. <laughs> yeah. They don't realize there's this entire subculture of people making awesome courses. Or they look over to um, the evil empire Udemy, which I cannot stand, um, is because those are all things like, oh, if I make this, I spent all this time, I spent all this money, I'm going to sell a $9 course. You know, it's... There, why, why, sh why should I make it? I'm literally, not, I can't even go get, you know, a meal from McDonald's for a course sale. Right. And they don't realize that there is two extreme niches. There are people that really want to learn how to do things and be better with it. And you can seriously monetize that in, you know, enhancement, enhancing your life and all. Because, I mean, think about how much people spend on things that intrinsically make their lives better between life coaching and meditation and, um, you know, family support, you know, how to be a better dad or mom or things like that. People spend a lot of money doing it and you can create an impact on a huge scale in an avenue like building a course. Because ultimately, if you're in a service industry, for example, something like, um, you know, coaching, well, at some point you only have so many hours in a day. Mm -hmm. If you build a course, what happens is all of those, you know, sort of basically a course is in reality. And this is the, and this is the thing that people forget. Ultimately a course is a really complex 
FAQ, frequently asked question. That's really what it is. Yeah. Is then you can just hone in on very specific issues and be a guide, not a question and answer board. Mm. Okay. That's perfect. So while, while that's an excellent cap, we're here on here with Josh Brown, the rogue teacher. And if you want to learn about how to accelerate your course building, join his Facebook group, Course Building Accelerator. You can go to bit bit dot oh, we almost got it. We oh, almost got it. Got it. Yeah. Oh, it's over here. Okay. No. Okay. Oh, here we go. We're gonna pass it off. Here we go. Yep. We're scrolling here. We're scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Got that oh, there it is. Forward there slash. It is. Thanks, buddy. We want to make sure it keeps moving. Yeah. Josh. <laughs> so it's bit.ly forward slash Josh Brown Facebook group. All lowercase. That's Josh Brown Facebook group. Bit.ly forward slash Josh Brown Facebook group. Excellent. And say it again. I said, that's excellent. I appreciate it, man. Yeah. Anybody who is, is a friend here at Tribe of Fun, yeah, and your community, I, you know, always open, openly take in you guys and always want to make sure you all have a ability to, you know, bring your message to the world. Mm, thank you. Yeah. That's, let's dig into that a little bit more, Josh, you know, why is it so I, I want to reemphasize this again because we're we're kind of we're kind of tipping around it, playing around with it, but why is it so important that these experts, these people with all this knowledge, share it with the world, build a course so that they can help people? The most most important asset in the entire world is knowledge. Hands down. Knowledge and powers. Um, that's why, for example, you know, when you know the worst times in our world's history have been the first thing they did was take away knowledge. And if you're empowering knowledge, you um, are able to empower those you're around and empower for change. And um, it's a, it's an intangible asset, but it can make tangible assets. Um, so for me with the idea of being able to convey knowledge and gift the world with what your experiences are, there's no better reward ever because it's literally something from your soul you're giving him because it's the sum of your experiences and your um, background and all of that is all brought together. And to me, there's just nothing better. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks for being the stand for that. It's, a, it's extremely deep thought right there. It was like, <laughs> yeah, it, and, well, yeah. But it, it is, uh, it's important. And I think it gets a little bit overlooked in this whole sea of the feed of like these marketers building these courses to basically teach you how to build these marketing courses to teach people how to market, um, which is super valuable. Mm -hmm. And, um, I think that there's a real power inside of truly building a course to help people and having that be the main focus and knowing that if you give true value and you build a course in a way that really generates people results, whether that's monetary results or relationship results or, you know, tangible you know they get to build something or they get to create something like that's that's a huge impact on the world you know and so it's important yeah and that that's the thing that so many people like forget in that and, and i'm not here to bash the other people who created courses on how to build a course it's just i realized when i was going through this is that naturally unless you're an educator you always lean toward your learning style and if you're naturally a marketer or something like that, you lean naturally to a certain learning style. Mm. And, you know, I actually, you know, I know quite a few of the, the people who have built these courses and what my program is and what my mentality is, is to be a guide to all of them. So it's not, you know, Josh Brown trying to take over the world of course building. It's just a matter of, you know, finding the super specialty things. Like you're not going to find very many people in marketing that say I'm a marketer for everything. You know, if you find somebody who says I'm a great marketer on Facebook and YouTube and Google ads and Bing and everything all at once, they're probably not very good at it, <laughs> you know, yeah. because they're not specializing in one specific thing. 
you know, and for what I'm doing, what I like to do is really, you know, and I do teach the marketing you know, how to very specifically market your course, you know, and how to do it from a tactical perspective. But the concentration is the course itself, because ultimately that's what you need to do. And the analogy I always give with this, and because I always do get the people that come in, they're very inquisitive about it, and they say, well, doesn't ever, you know, well, we've all been to school. Don't we know how to build a, you know, how to teach? Well, no, because the very simple reason is if you've ever been to school and had a really crappy teacher, you know not everybody can teach. Um, mm -hmm. And because they're being paid to do it and they can't do it right. Um, and particularly when you start dabbling in it online with trying to be a teacher or, you know, be a mentor for people is that ultimately part of the problem is that the best analogy I can give getting back to that is basically um, saying you can teach. It's like saying you can build a car if you rode in one, you know, the vehicle to get you there, but you don't know what's happening under the hood. You don't know what that teacher behind the screen or in the front of the room or who organized the mastermind did prior to getting to you seeing it. And there's a whole bunch of other mechanics back there that make that happen. Yeah. Wow. That is such a good analogy. Mm -hmm. Um, I want to put that on a shirt. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, that's so good. Cause it, I like, as soon as you said it, I was like, I know exactly what you're talking about. Um, mm -hmm. So the, while we're talking about the car and that's different driving a car than knowing how to build mm -hmm. one, let's dive a little bit deeper. And I, we talked about a couple learning styles, but would you go more in depth about what are different learning styles and how would you, how do you have your students approach that inside of their course? Um, well, there's, there's, for example, auditory learners, visual learners, kinesthetic and tactile. Those are the four that most people in the educational world can agree upon. Um, there's some debate about some others and people are under the assumption that you're all or one or the other, but not, you kind of lean one towards one or the other and you have emphasis in some of the other areas too. Like for example, a lot of times, you know, you're a musician. That means you're going to he lean heavily to auditory and kinesthetic. Meaning you're, if right. you hear something and then you can do it with your hands. Mm -hmm. um, those are traditionally things that people um, are really good at in those areas. A lot of programmers are visual because they can, they can see something on the screen and pull the, what's happening together, those types of things. Um, and when you're building a course, you have to realize that if you just have slide deck on the screen and somebody listening to it, as you voice it over, you're not reaching a lot of people. So for example, what I do, and, um, this is actually one of the units in the core in the course. And what I teach my students is that like, for example, in my program, what I do is I put bullets of what I'm going to talk about up on the screen as I'm going. And then I come back to my screen and I talk about it. So you're lo looking at me. What it forces you to do is, and I also include a workbook with it as well. So the person can look down and I encourage them to print it out that they can look down and see the notes. They're seeing me talking, which gives the personal interaction that so many people need of be feeling like you're literally sitting across the table from me. Um, then they're able to see the notes to guide them along. So they're then seeing it hearing it and I encourage them to take notes on the page about, hey, try to write this down, things like that. Because then when you start writing it down, that's when the kinesthetic learners take over um, as well. So you're now hitting three of the four. Tactile in an online environment is extremely hard to pull off, um, but you're at least leaning towards a couple of the other learning styles, mm -hmm. um, modalities as we like to call it, um, right. when you're doing that. So then you're seeing it, you're hearing it, and you're writing about it. Mm. And so what is, uh, what is tactile? Like what's the difference between tactile and kinesthetic? Um, tactile is generally somebody who has to touch and feel it. That's not as common to a lot of people. Kinesthetic is actually um, doing it like a process. Right. Okay. I gotcha. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So definitely would be pretty challenging in an online space to do the tactile unless it yeah. would be for, unless it's like for a specific thing. So that's just a music course, having them play the guitar or play the mm -hmm. instrument would be the tactile or would that be the kinesthetic? It, or be well, a it, bit it's, of both? it's a little bit of both because um, when you are, are tactile, you actually physically have to touch it. 
and kinesthetic mm. is like the movements to do it and your body has to be moving for you to learn basically it's sort of like um one of the hacks is like for children with adhd and stuff like that is um and sorry rant moment do you mind if i rant for a second i love it i'm, I'm open to okay it. rant moment okay everybody buckle up here we go oh okay. my goodness get excited. all righty get excited for ding fun. ding is um, in most modern school, in most modern, particularly public schools, um, the um, students are placed in desk anywhere from 30 to 90 minutes. And you intrinsically tell them to sit there, right? Well, a good portion of the room is either a kinesthetic learner or has ADHD or both. And they need to move to actually learn. And an example of this is I happen to be a kinesthetic learner. And what would I do? Your brain would naturally trigger saying, you're not learning, you need to learn. And you bounce your foot. And I would start bouncing my foot. I'm a rather large dude. So if I bounce my foot, it kind of bounces the room a little bit. And the teacher would be like, stop bouncing your foot and would yell at me. Basically the teacher is telling me, stop learning. Because my foot bouncing was causing my brain to be able to accept the information to be a kinesthetic learner. And while we're placing our kids in these classrooms and having them sit there for 30 and 90 minutes and not moving, you're basically telling a whole huge portion of the room, stop learning and not empowering them the ability to do it. All they have to do is bounce or move. I had my test scores and attention go up, way up, when I put gave my students the ability to either stand when I was lecturing. I just told them like, take the back row. You can stand and take notes. I had a I had a bunch of clipboards and they could stand there and take notes about what I was doing or bounce their foot. I even had one student that could not pass a standardized test to save anything. And I gave him a trick of he actually held a golf ball because it had like ridges and stuff on it. And when he would take tests, he would actually roll it around in his hand because it wouldn't make any noise. And it, he, next time he did, he passed his test like that. Wow. Because it causes engagement and it causes the mind actually people engage if you're a kinesthetic learner or you have ADHD and your body is naturally needing to move. You can't stop. Basically when we're telling all these kids to sit there and sit in their seat and not move, tell little Johnny not to just to sit there and be quiet is we're telling them to actually not learn. And particularly the kids that are like, they need to talk while they're learning. It's because they're, they're an auditory learner. If they talk about it, they remember it. And by just sitting, sit there, take notes, listen, you're not engaging a whole portion of the room because they might need to move or walk and things like that. And also when you're trying to shove 30, 45, 90 minutes at 25 minutes, the learning curve goes like this. So this block wow. scheduling and stuff with high school students and all just does not work. You know, not, trying to shove 90 minutes of information down your brain that mm. even for a trained adult, so, that's hard. Yeah, and sure. um, in particular, um, and this is a stat. Anybody can look this up. So nobody get all mad at me. I'm looking right at the camera for this one. Um, is it's actually a statistic is particularly male students in particular need to move when they learn. It's just biology of how we're wired and in elementary schools are particularly told not to move. And that's why a lot of times their test scores and their learning achievements are much lower, but in classes that, that they can be moved, that they can move things like bouncing their feet. They, they have these special bands you can put on the bottom of the desk. They're like giant rubber bands and they can wiggle them. Um, the test scores go way up. Wow. So if you ever have a student who wiggles and they can't in school and they wonder why your test scores are low, you might want to talk to the teacher. Wow. Rant over. Yeah, that is some incredible. <laughs> and that's all proven science. You can look it up. <laughs> right. Anybody out there who wants to be like, that's all right. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, it, that's incredible. And it makes perfect sense. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, wow. That's such all just amazing information. Uh, we're on here with Josh Brown. He is the Rogue Teacher Course Building Accelerator. It's his Facebook group. He sees courses differently. <laughs> and if you want to join his group, go to bit.ly forward slash Josh Brown Facebook group. He gives a lot of amazing information away. And then as well, he does have a course and a program on how to build courses. And I believe he's launching a new live program or a new mm -hmm. kind of round of of the a new group um in march so if you're interested in joining that you can find him on facebook josh brown 
aka the rogue teacher or go to his facebook group bit.ly forward slash josh brown facebook group all lowercase yeah that that program's gonna be pretty cool because i know not everybody can attend a live event or dedicate a weekend but some want to just to accelerate to the end quicker mm-hmm. so um i have a program that's self-guided but with um group support so when people are building it, they can still bounce questions off me. But then I also have an accelerated 90-day program that also includes a two-day in-the-classroom event that actually they can come. Um, this first one's going to be near my hometown here in Nor- Norfolk, Virginia. And um, what it does, we basically sit down for two full days. And I take you through, whether you have an idea or none, through my delivery techniques um, how to implement the toolbox of all those little things in there. And um, so all you have to do is when you leave that event, you eat, all you have to do is build your um, slides, know how to film it to still engage people, film it and then deliver it. You have everything, framework, curriculum, everything. You even have your Facebook graphics, you name it. It's all done. Wow. That in is two days. amazing. Two days. You got to get be a part of that if you want if that sounds like a good thing for you, Josh is the guy. Josh Brown Facebook group, bit.ly forward slash Josh Brown Facebook group, course building accelerator on. Um, so I heard you heard you snuck a little something in there just then, the toolbox. Let's can mm-hmm. we talk about that a little bit? Like what are some of your favorite tools in the toolbox? Um others? Yeah, it's basically all the things I've learned over the past 10 years teaching super high technology things. And the and I'm big on analogies, and that's actually part of the toolbox is stories and quotes and analogies, because that is actually how people, we are naturally wired to remember stories. Um, I mean, it goes all the way back to like cavemen and cave women sitting around the fire at the end of the day talking about some big ass wildebeest or whatever the heck they just bagged. You know, and of course, it was, it's always bigger. It's like a fishing story, you know, because I mm-hmm. guarantee if you look at the cave paintings, that's exactly what they were talking about was it was all the same stuff we talk about now um, mm-hmm. is we're wired to remember based based on story. That's why we love movies and we love music is music and movies and books all tell stories. We are wired for stories and quotes and things like that. So that's actually one of them analogies and stories in because analogy is basically just a story in short form is um, the analogy I give um, for this is like, if you're doing building your course and you have the content in just the video, that's like a cake, okay? And cake is good. Cake is tasty. It provides sustenance, right? But you know, most people like cake. Yeah, um, I like but, cake. Yeah, I like cake. I mean, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm more of a pie guy, but we'll, we'll, oh, we'll go with the analogy for right okay. now. Okay. Um, but, Nobody remembers the cake. They remember the icing. So the toolbox is all the icing that makes the cake look great. It makes it memorable. Mm -hmm. So like the icing that I do is talking about people like things like I just did at a story. I Mm -hmm. guarantee you're not going to remember the extra stuff in a course is like the icing on a cake. And like the story with and like the analogy I gave with with the car talking about driving it. You remember that forever. You remember it. And I have people a year, I came up with that analogy a year ago and people are still re- re- talking about, oh, that thing about the car. Yeah, yeah, They don't remember the whole like analogy I gave, but they remember the sentiment behind it. So it's all of those things that add to it. Things like creating an, a workbook that'll cause engagement for your students, which is super powerful. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, because a lot of people will just make their slide deck printable and that really isn't the same thing. You know, they can't take notes on it and stuff like that. You know, having a workbook that goes with it because a lot, like I said, kinesthetic learner, they're going to want to write it down. So mm-hmm. having that available for them to take notes on. And um, what would you what would you put into a workbook? Like, how would you take your slides? So you have information on, you know, whatever topic you're teaching. How would you put that into a workbook so that it's like an effective tool for people? Um, What I do is for my workbook, for example, um, is like I will include exactly what the slide says plus some. Like I'll put like whatever the story was or a quote on top of it or a picture that will catch somebody's attention. 
like um, one of the first units I talk about is built is um, how to build your network. So I call it your ecosystem, basically where everybody comes in between not knowing you, warm traffic, you know, buyer and then reselling at your ecosystem. Mm -hmm. So like the part of that I have is literally the picture for that is a giant elephant booty. Like when you open up the workbook, it's like a big old elephant booty. Just, you know, your ecosystem, because it was a nature picture, people like ecosystem, whatever. And then it's a trigger. It's like, they immediately chuckle a little bit, which immediately allows them to relax again, part of it. Mm. And it allows them to have like a moment. Then also what I do in those books, I put action items, things like, you know, go to here to, you know, go into the Facebook group and post this. It gives me an update of how people are doing stuff, but then also it makes them give them a hurdle. So in the workbook, I have people do things like that too, because it engages them. Um, I, I put little jokes in there too, just because again, it just, it it, add, it takes off that this is a course and makes it more enjoyable. Enjoyable. Yeah. So I love that. How, um, in your opinion, and maybe you have, maybe you have statistics and, and data behind this, but how important is it to make the learning and your course fun, interactive, enjoyable? Well, I mean, that, that's really the big thing is that like the only way you're going to improve completion rates of digital courses is making them more enjoyable. It's the common complaint among them as it was boring, you know, and that that's the thing that drives me nuts is that like everybody puts the emphasis on you know, building this out and like they'll spend, you know, months on their funnel and PPC campaigns and they'll spend, you know, zero time on making sure it's actually an enjoyable course. They just like take all the information, go through it linear, you know, and there's there's two big camps of that world too, of like there's the research and build camp and then there's the pre-sell and then build it from lives camp. Mm -hmm. There's a, there's those two. And hey, a lot of people have made a whole lot of money doing either one of those ways. And you can still use that when you're building your course, but you have to know how to then when you're doing that, still implement these strategies that make it enjoyable. I don't care how you build it, whether you want to pre-sell it or you want to pre-build it, regardless, both ways, you still need to build your basically waypoints that allow people to have those moments of wins. And also you need to have those, um, the ability for everybody to feel um, engaged with the topic and not just preached to, but a member of the learning environment. Hmm. Okay. So just, just bring it back here. So you make it enjoyable, whether you're going to pre-sell it and then build it, or you're going to pre-build it and then sell mm -hmm. it. You make it enjoyable by creating basically a community Mm -hmm. having them become a part of the process, not being preached to having jokes, having things that are generally fun or that cause kind of yeah. like that trigger inside of people to just like kind of relax into what they're doing. Yeah. Okay. And so exactly. Say, yeah. Yeah. So let's say that someone is building, let's say someone is pre-selling and then they're, they're building a course as they go, which is pretty common thing nowadays um what would be so how does someone like what's like a check checks and balances that someone could use to make sure that they're doing those engagement items throughout? well i my personal take on it is that i what i haven't when i talk to my students about doing what's called a hybrid build mm -hmm. where you sort of take the best of both worlds because Big problem people start building courses they don't have clarity on what they're going to teach and if you don't at least and that like again yeah i said most of the people i'm dealing with almost anybody who's going to try building a course is somebody who already has at least experience in something mm -hmm. um there's very few people that are just going to dive into the deep end and go i don't know what i'm doing but i'm just going to stay one week ahead of everybody and it'll be all right it, there's very few people that drop right. jump, jump into that i mean it that takes a serious bit of fortitude to go down that route to start taking mm -hmm. payments from somebody and not know what to do. Um, quick way to get sued. And, um, but what I, what I like to do is actually have people build out. And that's the reason why I have the two day build is basically design a framework, but know it's not set in stone. 
and build out the first unit so you can still give your students value and give them a community right from day one of knowing what the course is going to be about and where they can get their value and all those things. Because if you already are at least a quasi expert or have done your research, you know what the course should as a whole entail. It doesn't mean you can't add later on or build out more to it. And that also, when you at least have a map of where you're going, like I'm not saying like pre-building the whole thing is really scary because mm -hmm. then, you know, you're, basically having to put all that ahead of it. Then if you pre-build, if you pre-build at least your course framework and that first unit, you then can still add to it and build it out as you're going along while you're still making some sales from it and getting feedback from your students. So it's a little, it's a best of sort of both worlds as you're going through. It's, yeah. it's fairly unique. Nobody really does that. And I'm like, why can't you just do both? You're so right, Josh. Why can't you? I don't know. I guess you can. Yeah, you can. It took the teacher to find out um, because that's basically what I did was um, can, can I give you a little funny backstory about how quick I had to build content? Not at all. Not at okay. all. Okay. My, when my first teaching gig, um, I took and was a career switcher, like I said. I took and got hired and I had three days before I started. Three. And I didn't even have time. textbooks, oh, none. And I was walking into three different classes, each one with 20 students. So I had to build all the content as I was going for three classes, 20 students a pop to deliver. And they're all high school students. So if, you're, if your stuff sucks, they're gonna tell you real quick. Mm. And all of them, if they didn't pass their certification would come back on me and I could lose my job. Wow. So you got real good at building content quickly because I would actually per class instruct, it would have been 135 hours a semester per class. Wow. That's instruction time. That's so instruction you, time. So you really, and you had to build it all out um, quick, three days. Yeah, so I, I had to build, yeah. And when I was actually after that, I still constantly change what class I was teaching. So like, for example, I would teach generally, my last couple of years I taught four classes, but my uh, normally I teach three separate classes, all of them different. And I would ha basically have 90 minutes to teach each day. I had to build all the content, all the lessons to go with it, the lectures, what the students were gonna do. And during the day, I had 30 minutes per class to prep to teach 90 minutes. So I had to 3x whatever I was doing. Wow. So so walk walk us all through that that process. Like how do you basically you start with nothing, you're and and this is good for people because like the faster people take action, the better. So like if they want to make a course really quickly, you know, where do you start? What's the first step? What's the second step? What's the third step? Um, basically, the, the first step you, you do is um, you have to map out, you have to brainstorm what you're going to be teaching first. And then I like to then go to the research part, see what other people are doing. Make sure that it's going to actually sell. Find other people are teaching the courses. Watch the webinars, you know, look mm -hmm. at the free content, you know, check out the, e the evil Udemy and see what people are selling there and all of those things, like really do your research to find out what other people are doing and write it down, figure out what, what the units are they're teaching, what the objectives are they teaching, what aren't they teaching but you think should be taught, all of those things, and really do the research on what it is. And then I like to throw it all out there, and I'm super visual, so um, I do a lot of uh, whiteboarding and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And um, I put all that information out there. And then from all that information, I start seeing where the groupings are. Like this could be a unit, this could be a unit, this could be a unit and start grouping it all. Then figure out, okay, for this person to do this, what do they need to know how to do? And then I lay out all the objectives and which one of those could be an individual lesson. What could be bundled up, you know, two or three items to a lesson. Because I like to instruct things in 15 to 25 minutes. That's sort of my window for an individual lecture because it allows people on a lunch break or between stuff to be able to do a lecture, a lesson, 
And in between them, because you switch lectures, it allows them also to reset their brain to continue to learn. So that's probably the whole learning psychology thing. Mm, what do you mean? So I lay it all out there and then I map the whole thing out, what the orders need to be, where I need to put my segues. Um, and then I start putting in, okay, how can I gamify it? I start looking where I can gamify things. I look at where can I put supporting materials, stories from my history, or even ones that I can just look up, like, you know, find a quote or something, find an image. And I start laying the whole thing out. Mm, okay. And then how, so, before, so just so I'm clear, everything is laid out. You've brainstormed, you've researched, you've separated it into units and lessons. And then what's your process for going to begin kind of recording and, and producing the content? I, what I'll do is I'll do the introduction unit. Every time you build a course, unit one should be the 3000 foot view. It should be what, you know, pe what about. people are going to see as a whole, because, because you're not going into specificity, it allows you to pivot better. But when people go into your course, it'll allow them to see um what what it's going to be about so they don't feel lost from day one mm. um it gives them a view of okay this course is for me this person actually knows what they're doing it, and it indoctrinates them into how you teach and it will allow them to start you know relaxing and realizing okay this is actually gonna be a cool thing to do and it includes what what the details are going to be and then once you've built that out it allows you to drop into the marketing end of it too where you can start actually getting people into the course and telling them it's a beta and stuff like that and it takes the basically weight off your shoulders um, of, okay, my, you know, I built this huge monster and I don't know if it's going to sell or um, people are going, um, it sounds cool, but I want to see something, you know, because then also it's easier to sell. If you've now had at least yourself done the introduction unit, mm -hmm. you now have the whole image. You it's easier to talk about whole image. Yeah. Yeah. It's easier to talk about it. It's easier to sell it if you know what it is. Right. Mm, thank you, Josh. That's mm -hmm. awesome. So if you're on here live or you're listening on the replay, you can get to know Josh, get connected with Josh. You can even join his two day or is it two days or three days? Two days. His two day live course building accelerator event. Uh, mm -hmm. And you can find out more about that at bit.ly forward slash Josh Brown Facebook group. That's all lowercase josh brown facebook group yes sir and, or you can search up uh or you can search up course building accelerator on yes 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 facebook. it's a facebook group so that's amazing and that answered one of a big question i had like how long are your segments normally you said about 15 to 20 minutes mm -hmm. and yeah that's perfect so i have i know we're coming up here on close to the end so I have a couple. So is there anything that you wish that I had asked, but we or wish that we talked about, but we didn't talk about? Um, no, I've had, this, this has been fun because it's like, you know, it, it's just more of a chat. I like that. that. That's the style I like. So props to you, my man. Sweet. OK, cool. Um, in that case, I have another question. And this one, you kind of answer, but I just want to get it out there into the open. Like, can anyone that's an expert create a course? Yes. Mm, perfect. And then what is the best <laughs> advice for those experts looking to start a course? Get off your butt. No, I'm trying, I'll give you more than that. Um, that's that's no, it's fine like, if that's the best advice. I mean, hey. It's like, that's it. I wish I, had, I wish I had like a better mic. I could just go like this and just like lock off the screen. But um, yeah, really it is. I mean, the thing is, is that anybody who's an expert in something or is passionate about it mm. can build a course because there's very few people who are actually going to take the time to go learn it or it's not their primary wheelhouse. So they're not going to take the time to learn it. If you are, you know, willing to take that time and effort to learn the process and um, not only learn the process, but learn how to um, convey that information to them, then you're able to have, then you're able to actually do it. Because that's the really the big thing is like most people, the, the only reason in the entire online space right now to take a course 
because you want it handed to you quickly. I mean, think about it. Like you can literally go on the internet right now and find any answer to anything you want. Mm -hmm. um, it's just a matter of it's now so saturated. If you can find somebody that gives you the information extremely quickly and effectively, that is where a course comes in. It allows them to get to the end result much quicker. That's what a um, course is there for, is to get you from point A to point B extremely quickly. You could literally get a doctorate, never walk into a classroom of all the information, but it would take you forever to filter through all of it and trial and error and learning much stuff that actually didn't make sense. Same thing for a course. You already know what the end result needs to be if you're an expert or you're even passionate about something, mm -hmm. but most people won't take the time to learn it. So if you're willing to take the time to learn it, you're going to be able to impact more people and um, be able to really create a result for them. And you can do it. It's just a matter of learning the extra skill sets to teach it on top of what you know. Because if you don't learn the skill sets to teach it, you're not doing them the service they need. Mm. So you must learn how to teach as a part of mm -hmm. your passion or expert in creating a course. Yeah, because and I think that's a super yeah. I think that's super valuable advice because um I I went to school for a while. I have a lot of credits in education. Um and I didn't end up getting that degree, but um there is a whole pedagogy. There is a whole <laughs> tactic and there are effective tactics that help people to learn and to gain new skills and if you are one of those people who really helps people learn effectively, then you're going to be, your course is going to be more successful. Your clients are going to be more successful and you'll end up becoming, you know, more joyous because you're able to really impact people's lives. Very much so. And that's, and that's really one of the big takeaways I want people to have from, you know, our conversation here is that like it teaching is a craft. It's part mm -hmm. science in part application. So when you are trying to convey your information and teach it, you definitely need to give people the basically knowledge and empower them with your, with your um, background, but you do that in a very specific way. And to get the most out of it, you're gonna take the time to give these people your knowledge, you should give them the best possible outcome. Because when somebody comes to you to learn their knowledge, you're now their mentor they're entrusting you with giving them the most information and correct information. And if you don't deliver on that, then you're, um, you're not fulfilling the promise to them because it goes both ways. They're, you're, you basically are requesting the best from them to learn and they want the best from you as the teacher. If you both don't come together, then both, then you're not getting the most out of the um, course. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. So I've got two more questions. First sure. one is, what are you grateful for? Um, I'm grateful for the ability to do this. I mean, we live in such an awesome time right now that literally anybody can start a business and impact the world. Anybody. You know, you can literally start a business and, you know, educate people or market or whatever literally from anywhere. And that's really cool. So I'm really grateful for that. You know, I'm also grateful for, you know, extremely supportive family too. You know, that, that has done that because it's, uh, it's so cool to, you know, be part of a community and family that all is, you know, supportive of that. So it's really, that it's a twofer for me. Yeah. Love that. And then what in your life brings you a ton of joy? Uh, family. I mean, that's really the, for me, the big thing I've got, it, you know, I've got an incredibly fun family. Um, you know, my son is four and he is a ball of energy and a good energy. So he keeps me on my toes and that that's really the big thing. And, and, you know, he definitely also helps limit ego immediately. Um, so it drives me to make this bit, business successful because I want him to see the success from this. So, you know, that for me is just so important in, um, 
you know, my wife is extremely supportive of this. She's an entrepreneur in her own right as well. And um, she's actually an author. And, um, you know, to also be on that journey with her is so, so rewarding and um, a blessing to me. And I'll use that term a lot, and that um, but it truly is. Mm, thank you so much for sharing that. Again, we are on here with Josh Brown, the rogue teacher. If you want to connect with him more, go to bit.ly forward slash Josh Brown Facebook group, all lowercase. And if you're listening here on the replay or live or wherever you're listening to this, go out there and become the most amazing version of yourself and contribute to people in the greatest way that you can. You are a huge contribution to the world. And uh, see you on the other side of life. I don't know what side, but the other side. Definitely, definitely, my man.